Hey everyone, it's Matt along with Tracky, and today we're going to talk about the Talent Blossoming. The last two sets were really just four units, but there was a really good unit and a really bad unit. I'll tell you which ones and why, so stay tuned. All right, first we're going to talk about Baramos. Uh, I'm going to rate him as medium. Um, he is a decent upgrade, but there are a lot better upgrades out there. Uh, and we're almost done already with uh, what Japan has currently had for upgrades. So I don't know if we're actually going to get new ones or as they're updated in Japan, or we're going to get a Darth relatively soon of S units. So even with the mediums, we'll, if that's the case, we'll actually be able to really start farming those up as well. So that's okay. Um, his movement plus one is probably uh, a really big one. He really heavily focuses on the confusion debuff. Um, so if the enemy is confused, he gets a pretty nice skill uh, that gives a uh, compressed kaboom if... Uh, the attack target is within the follow-up range. It's called the Archfiend of Chaos uh, instead of uh, Dragon Sword Pulse here. Uh, I got Dragon Lord Tree Form on the brain here, but uh, same difference here. And he gives two confusion successes plus 10%. So uh, going to talk about that, but let's first go with the Nico God Miasma here. This is his really, really, really big skill that is actually really useful uh it deals major breath damage to all enemies and occasionally confuses uh, if you include the 20 percent chaos uh or sorry the confusion success on top of that it becomes a pretty decent amount of confusion uh if enemies are strong against confusion though that it doesn't happen and a lot of uh Baramos's power kind of disappears that uh uh, power is uh, with the uh, confusion he gets to co-attack with the compressed bang, which is a very, very powerful skill, especially when he gets to do it for free as a co-attack. So that's really, really nice. But um, the main skill here is that Nico God Miasma. Uh, in order to kind of uh, prepare that next, uh, what I don't like about this is that it doesn't cover the two major things that was kind of worrisome about uh, Baramos. Uh, the first one is he's still really low agility, so he doesn't quite attack first. And with this confusion and all that, um, him being low agility kind of stinks. Uh, and two, he uses a lot of MP, so he just doesn't have a lot to really spare. And this breath attack is a huge MP drain. It does lower a bit uh, when you level it up, so it's not nearly as big. And it's actually a pretty large uh, decrease uh, on top of the uh, effectiveness when it goes up. So it does do an awful lot of good for him. Uh, yes, he can co-attack with the compressed ionosun, but... Uh, it's not something that I'm really, really sold on. Uh, it's an interesting set, and I'm not going to say it makes him ignorable. Um, it's just that uh, in a lot of areas where you're going to use Confuse, um, especially in PvE, um, or PvE, sorry, Confuse really doesn't happen very often. Uh, there might be more that comes out, or this could be just something... Uh, for like uh, specific bosses that just makes it breeze. But all in all, I consider this an average one, and there is better out there already. Uh, the top two uh, that I consider very, very good is Metal Dragon and Dragon Lord. And one that I consider is pretty good is Dragon Lord True Form. Those, I think, are higher on the list to do than Baramos. But also that's higher on the list and might be highest on my list is her, Elena. Elena, and I actually uh, 
tried to get one more for, and I got really lucky on the guaranteed. With this buff, Elena is potentially broken, but is a very, very high ass end glass shard or glass cannon. Um, she was already a glass cannon that had a little trouble moving. Um, but what they did is they fixed her with the movement plus one. That was very, very huge for her. Second skill is Martial Soul, which greatly raises agility, which makes her act really, really fast and gives her evasion for three turns. Uh, she becomes basically uh, a, a Monte Carlo simulation. And what do I mean by that? Uh, basically, uh, especially in PvE, you're going to use her as a rolling you're going to try to get her to uh, go out, attack, kill enemies very quickly, and hope that she evades so that she um, doesn't take damage with like the one attack because her agility is going to be so high. And the evasion rate along with that, that will allow her to kind of make uh, maps a little bit easier, especially if they're weak to Frizz. She raises first type physical potency by 20%. All of her skills are frizz based, including her new one, Crimson Sweep, which gives a nice AoE around her. And all in all, they looked at her kit and said what made her really weak and basically fixed almost everything. She is still a glass cannon, but she can evade, which honestly, without giving her an insane amount of HP and MP, I don't think they could have fixed without this. Um, there, but on a side note, uh, so we have her butterfly earrings, which raises a uh, crit rate. She has a higher crit rate than most. On top of it, they gave her uh, a nice uh, area here that gives her a crit rate increase as well. She becomes an absolute terror, especially in arena, because of the fact that she can also crit and do brutal blows very very easily and is now a very strong arena candidate uh even though she was kind of ready for that it has now been increased along with her agility and movement she can now pretty much reach the board and move throughout the board um she is still as i say a glass cannon but on if you're facing her on defense she can uh, more reliably and more annoyingly take out a unit that she has no uh, reason why she should be able to take out a unit because of her such high, ridiculously high critical hit chance. Um, and as I say, I think uh, of the four units that we have here, she is by far the highest one if you have enough hearts in her to go for um, and might be actually the best uh blossoming unit out there other than metal dragon who uh you might have you probably have even free to play more than elena and that's the only reason why in my mind that metal dragon was number one on my list unfortunately we have kirill <laughs> Next, and well, Kirill is not exactly a uh, top end unit, and also they really did not fix a lot of his problems. One of the problems they fix is this movement. The movement plus one is really needed for him. Uh, he is a attack healer that does buffs, doesn't really help out a lot of other units. They gave him a buff to help out other units with. Uh, for 10 turns, giving 10 MP and a rhombus to all allies. It kind of helps, but in all honesty, it's just not enough. The other thing they gave him is Health Professional, which lowers healing MP costs and raises the overall effect. Yeah. That's not his problem. It wasn't his MP pool. It wasn't his... Uh, his healing effect was a problem, but that's because it was a smaller area and on top of it, he didn't have like any reflective abilities or reflexive, I should say, abilities to heal or with the golden slime that becomes, you know, basically a moving 
wall. Instead, uh, what they did is just go, oh, we're going to make him a super big buffer. But in all honesty, these buffs that he can do is just not all that great. Um, my favorite part about this is not the skill, but the skill name. I love the Gospel of Zarkoa. I think that is a great name. Um, the Erases Attack and Wisdom of Allies for three turns is interesting. It makes him able to really buff attack parties. But he's slow. He's not going to be able to go first to raise the attack and wisdom of those allies. So they really needed to focus on his uh, agility in order for him to become you know, useful in that regards. Uh, and, you know, as I say, if they gave him, like, say, 80 agility instead of health professional, it might have been a little differently and there might have been other ways to really use him. But all in all, I think they really missed the boat. Finally, we have Boreal Serpent. And from a A unit, and it, you know, uh, we're talking uh, slightly different here, I am pretty excited about this unit. Um, I've already got him out 40 out of 40. More, not really for his skills per se, but it's more that it really fixes one of his big problems. I mean, it's not a absolute, wow, it's completely fixed, but he gets a really good increase in HP, so he's less likely to be one hit. Uh, he could take one attack uh, much better. This gives him a, a bit more survivability, which is necessary. Um, all in all, you can get him to be uh, basically, I believe, 120 HP, uh, base HP total. You know, and when you go beyond that, that goes up even higher to 125 HP if you get him five hearted. Uh, so that is a pretty large increase. It's around actually 25% of an increase in HP, which was his greatest weakness. Um, the other thing that's really exciting is the Cracked Breath Tricks. It doesn't sound like an awful lot, but, um, it's over here, actually. It lowers the crack type Breath MP cost, which is important for Earth Blizzard, uh, but the raises potency and effect by 10% really adds a lot of, uh, potential damage to him, especially when you... If you're running a dragon arena team that already has like uh, the great dragon or a dimensional dragon as the leader, that 10% really adds up quickly, especially if you have his breath skills maxed out already. Um, since breath is based on level and, and ignores a lot of other stats, that 10%, you can just feel it. Um, he has the other ability that greatly enhances attack after the breath skill. It's okay, uh, but remember, if you're going to be using another breath skill, that attack just really doesn't matter. Um, so just be careful of that, because uh, you, you'd, you'd be expecting that that would be um, something that would be really boostful for him. But it's not as much, but it's just depending on how you use your Boreal Serpent. Uh, his skill, Earth Blizzard, is a, does three uh, attacks on one enemy and can lower attack on top of it. It's a pretty nice skill overall. Uh, with this ability to move four, and that has a range of three, uh, that basically means he can cover almost the entire board in Arena on turn one, depending on where you place him. So it is just a really nice skill that you can use. Uh, I don't rate it super, super wow, but it's not a bad skill either. It's just something that really fills his arsenal really nicely. Um, this is actually the A unit that uh, I focused on first for, as I say, my blossoming. And I'm going to be putting, I'm putting him now on my, uh, boss, uh, my talent blossoming team so that I can upgrade him as much as possible. Overall, uh, basically HP. Yeah, I do have his attack up 10 as well.
about, but that's just there. Um, I'm just trying to get him as high as possible because he is a very useful uh, member of all the teams. So there's my in-depth of the four units there. As I stated, on uh, Japan, we've only got one or two, I think two more S units and one more A unit. The two S units that were released were, I wouldn't call them horrible upgrades, but they weren't great upgrades. Uh, and they're released much, much later. So we'll see if we actually see those or we'll get a couple more uh, A, B, and C units first. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy, uh, later this week, I will do a more official ranking of all of the S's and A's, uh, especially, uh, for, uh, the talent blossoming where you should be spending your resources if you haven't already, uh, and how to make your own choice. It's not going to be just a, here's the list. Here's the top tiers. It's going to be what's best for your team, how to figure it out yourself, and I will walk you through that. So I hope you guys enjoy. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already because that greatly helps my channel. And I hope to see you guys later. Thanks, everybody. Bye.